I am joined by Sudeep Mishra and Abhilesh Jay Kumar from Tres Vista, a financial services and research company. And I'm delighted to say that they've formed a critical role in providing a lot of the material and the data that was used in WAMDA's country profiles, which is a key part of the whole WAMDA content mix. You're helping entrepreneurs through your role in WAMDA, but you're both very much entrepreneurs yourself. And you started the business back in 2006. So I'll start with you, Sudeep. Just tell me a little bit about the genesis sure. of the company. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's funny because me and Abhi are actually uh, opposites in a sense. I was born in the US and grew up in India. And Abhi was uh, born in India, but grew up in the US. Uh, as far as the genesis of the company, we both actually worked at uh, Merrill Lynch together uh, in New York. Uh, this is almost 10 years ago now we're talking about. And funnily enough, I think it was only our second year at Merrill that we said, you know, we should really go back and start a business because uh, this could be done out of India and we could do this better than we're doing it right now. Um, so, so that's really... You were kind of institutional of corporate guys in New York and you were just thinking, I want to go out, I'm, I'm, you know, the, the, the run of the mill, the corporate hierarchies, exactly. the progression, I want to go and do this on my own. Exactly. So we, we actually wanted to start the business, I think, when uh, we were really, really young. Uh, and, uh, you know, what eventually happened is uh, I went on to do some more investment banking, got operational experience in India, uh, we went on to do private equity, and then uh, we decided to essentially start the business back in November of 06 when uh, you know, I had essentially some experience so I was running a business in India and Abhi had private equity experience and we said, let's take our idea and actually take it to another level and make it even more high end. Let's be the only guys doing you know, outsourcing, but not so much outsourcing, really being a global financial firm who can support private equity, large corporations, small corporations, SMEs, and even something like Wanda. So basically tell me a little bit about, uh, Abhi, tell me a little bit about What's the core idea behind your company? Um, any, any companies here seeking your services? What would they get? Yeah, well, we have two types of client bases. One's on the finance side, asset managers primarily, whereby we do due diligence for them, help them evaluate new investment opportunities, uh, screen industries and companies, work with their portfolio companies to refinance, grow acquisitions. And we work with entrepreneurs um, of various stages, people with their first business idea, trying to put the business plan and financial model together, what do I need to do to raise capital, to second generation entrepreneurs who have large family businesses, several million in revenues, but have never institutionalized a business, right? So helping them communicate with the finance community, right? Taking the knowledge that's in their head, right? Intimate knowledge of their business and how to make money in that industry and communicate that to an investor community. So your background, uh, you, you both worked in finance yourself. Yeah. What kind of information do you think that the SME community really needs versus, I mean, obviously you're talking about different levels of investor when you're talking about huge portfolios, yeah. but coming down to uh, the, small, the small startup company or a medium-sized company that's looking to grow, what kind of information can you bring to the table that they can really service? Sure. I mean, like Sudeep said, we had this business idea when we were very young, and we didn't do it at that time, and we ended up doing the same thing we talked about three, four years later, right? And you know, the first thing I would say, I, there's a survey this morning that WAMDA had sent on these uh, spot me devices and it said, you know, what are the challenges to being an entrepreneur, right? Questions like, on a scale of one to five, how hard is capital? How hard is it to get the right idea, right? To get the right clients. And reality is looking back on it now, none of these things are hard. You don't need any of these things. You don't really need a concrete idea. You don't need the business plan, maybe a little bit of capital, but what you really need to do is just the decision to do it, right? Just start doing it. Right? Everything else will fall into place. If something doesn't work well, you'll improvise, you'll modify, and you'll move on. Right? This is the challenge of any business, large or small. Right? That, you know what, nothing is ever going to be perfect the first time. Right? Don't try to th think through every single possible challenge before you even start. Start, and the challenge will be incremental, and you'll grow from that. Deal right? with the hurdles when they appear. Don't, don't preempt them too far down yeah. in the future. Exactly. Just to add to that, I think it's an important point. I think people tend to, especially people who are very trained, uh, uh, you know, in business, they tend to weigh the risks and the returns. And I think uh, almost when you're going to be qualified to really start something, the risks are almost always going to outweigh the returns because, you know, you've got something really large going on. If you're doing well, you're going to be giving up something. But I think the key here is to not do that analysis and actually back yourself, like Abhi mentioned, and just stick with it because things will change and you will have to roll with the punches no matter how much analysis you do. So I think that's the biggest thing is just sticking with it, whatever you choose to do. I think your point as well, uh, Sudeep, your, your case, your, your history, if you like, is, yeah. it speaks to a lot of the, the, the Middle East entrepreneurs where you actually left the family business. Yeah. I mean, how, much, yeah. how, much, how easy was that for you to kind of think, well, I'm going to leave, you know, leave the family business and go out on my own, which is, yeah. you know, I think mine's actually, yeah, you're right, it is quite unique. In fact, you know, I came back in 2004 
walk in the family business, uh, and as you know, India has grown well, consistently over the last six years, but those two years were years of explosive growth, and the family business actually grew sevenfold in those two years, uh, and I had a large part to do with that, but also my timing was really good, and suddenly, you know, everything's great. There was no real reason to leave, except I felt like I could do more, and I really needed to do something on my own. So. Yeah, I'm kind of, it, it's, that's why I think the combination is quite unique because Abhi's done a little more finance, I've done operations, and I'm kind of second generation transitioning into first generation, Abhi's first generation entrepreneur. So it's very kind of unique set of skills that we bring to the table. And that's where we can add a lot of value to SMEs as well because, I mean, we have very diverse backgrounds. So we bring that into the people who come in, we make sure they're trained to see these different things. Uh, would you say, it would, it would be fair to say that both of you, you kind of, the entrepreneurial spirit within you made you always, you were always going to leave the corporate world, whatever it was a family business, whether it was Wall Street, whether it was a financial services company in Midtown, New York, or, or in Boston, is that energy was always going to get you to go? I, I would agree with that. You know, it's interesting, when we first started this business, I spoke to one of my early mentors in my career and, you know, told him, you know, it's exciting being an entrepreneur now. And he said, what do you mean now? Right? He said, you've always been an entrepreneur. Right? An entrepreneur isn't someone who just wakes up one day and says, I'm going to start a company. An entrepreneur is someone who every day wakes up and makes a choice to do something that day and take ownership of whatever it is they do, right? whether they're working for another company or working for their parents or working for themselves. Right? And to me, that's the core of being an entrepreneur, someone who takes ownership of anything they touch, anything they do. Right? It's not something, if someone doesn't have that attitude towards what they do, they think they're going to find that by starting their own company. If they didn't have that attitude in everything they were going to do, chances are they're not going to succeed in what they're starting themselves. Right? That inspiration to succeed should be there with everything you touch, not just if it's for yourself or for someone else, right? It's an ethos that we live by, right? If my name is attached to it, I'm gonna do my best to make sure it's excellent. Tell us a little bit about how you managed to then convert the idea of, you know, you obviously had, had discussions, you wanted to launch this company. Tell me about the genesis of the actual company and, and kind of any roadblocks that you encountered on the way and how, because I think there's a lot of people out here that may be thinking, I wanna start a company, but I've got a decent salary with a big corporate thing that would be disincentivized or demotivated by, by any challenges. Talk, talk to me about those early, early months, if you like, and how you actually think, right, yeah. I'm going to start an office, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to start the business, and then I'm going to overcome each of the problems as they appear. Yeah. You know, that's a great question. You know, I was working at a fund in Boston doing private equity, a billion and a half on a partner track, and uh, walked away from that to start up a company and out of a hotel conference room. In a different country. <laughs> in a different country, right, uh, where you know, I did not know the language at all, and I still don't know <laughs> the language um, but uh, you know like I said the biggest challenge is deciding to do it right once you've made that choice once I got on the airplane and landed on the ground day one is a job like any other job right I need to do certain things and I will get that done and I'll move forward and it was interesting you know you know a lot of this conference is about mentorship right pairing entrepreneurs with the right mentors you know uh, Linda Ruttenberg is speaking with Endeavor right now on another stage and you know mentorship is a big part of success and it's very important that you know you have sounding boards when you're starting a business right ultimately you need to believe in yourself like Sudeep said and if you're gonna be an entrepreneur you, you need to believe in yourself more than anybody else will right because times are gonna get tough you're gonna have an idea people will shoot it down right yeah. but you need to believe in yourself right you cannot have a plan B in your mind because if you have that plan B it's very easy to fall back on it you've got to be committed to succeed right and have that those sounding boards now Sudeep and I had the fortune of being business partners and being each other's sounding board at the same time. We did have a lot of outside advisors, but like Sudeep said, we have very different backgrounds, right? Him a lot more operational, me a lot more finance, right? Neither one is perfect for starting this business, right? Whereas I want to make business plans and draw out a five-year strategy before we have our first employee. You know, Sudeep's more about, okay, let's start selling before we have we, employees. We, so you it's need a customer, yeah. Yeah, and so it's, you know, it's very important to have a sounding board, whether within the company or outside. And I think that's important from the early stages of the business till you keep growing. There's a reason why even Fortune 500 companies have board of directors, right? And, and a lot of people, I think, you know, can easily fall into an arrogance trap saying, okay, no one believes me, I believe in myself. That means I shouldn't take advice from anybody else. It's not so much advice as much as a sounding board, right? Hearing out your ideas, saying them out loud yourself, you might discover that, you know what, that doesn't sound the same as it did in my head. Sure. So let's talk a little, sorry, do you want to carry on? I just want to add point? about obstacles. I mean, you mentioned, you know, as far as obstacles, I think there's going to be no shortage. I mean, looking back now, um, I mean, it was pretty crazy. We started off with eight people and we were four people a week later. And we we're like, what's going on? Like, we left our jobs and everything and 
Abhi's moved halfway across the world to start this, and we're down half people, and two people have left for reasons we don't even understand. Like, so, you know, our, our, we actually had an office, we had business cards printed, and then the entire lease and everything just fell apart a week before. But that's India, a week before we were supposed to move in. So, but you know what? Uh, you know, a week later we had another office, and you have no choice, and that's what it comes down to. What Abhi's talking about is you have to just believe, you have to back yourself. People are going to look at you and be like, you guys are, uh, you know, in your mid 20s, you really don't know what you're doing over here. But I, I don't think we ever doubted ourselves. We just said, no, we know exactly what we're doing. And I'm just going to assume everyone goes through this. And I think everyone does. And you just have mm. to assume that really strange things and really difficult obstacles are going to come your way. And you have to assume you're going to overcome them. And I think if you walk around without doubting yourself, that's the only way you can keep people and retain really good people as well, mm. to motivate them. You cannot flinch at all. I think that's one thing. Uh, we've done from from day one. If I may, I'm going to go back to the point that uh, that, that was made earlier about your so, desire to get one to get the customers. How did you get yeah. your first customer? How did you keep them? And how did you get more? And then on your, uh, I'd like to go to you and, and maybe just ask about Abby, if I could. What about marketing? How how do you basically reach your target audience? What strategies did you use? And what maybe lessons can you pass on to other entrepreneurs starting this out? But if I could start maybe with you, Sadiq. Sure. How about getting that first customer? What was the process like? Well, again, we had something planned. Uh, Abhi, you know, had just come down from the U.S., so we had what we called beta test clients, just like, you know, Wamda was a beta site yeah. until uh, earlier this morning. So we had those clients and people who agreed to work with us, knowing our backgrounds, knowing what we were setting out to do. Um, and that it just kind of lent itself from that. You approached them with your institutional experience exactly. and with your, with your track record in, in, in a previous career. Exactly, exactly. And then from then, it's just kind of grown. It's just we've had anchor clients over here and... I mean, um, the situation's kind of changed now because obviously we have some pretty significant brands who are clients of ours today. Uh, and as far as sales and marketing, I mean, that strategy is ever evolving. I think that's probably, strangely enough, one of the last things we actually focused on. And that might be different from most businesses. We actually focused on training, operations, investing in the people, all these other things before we actually completely focused on sales and marketing and sales processes. That's what we're doing a lot more of as of six months ago, I would say. Okay. If I could maybe, maybe then if, if sales marketing was sort of, sort of slow, quite, quite low down the, the priority list, then let's talk about um, uh, things that are probably very, very important to a, to a, to a business that's starting out was developing the right team. If I could talk to you a bit about that. Absolutely. And then secondly, um, running capital. Where did it come from? Did, yeah. did you get investment early on or did you use family money? Did you use credit cards and loans, how is it, you know, let's talk about one team and then sure. about the funding. Sure, on, on the team aspect, I moved to India four and a half years ago with the plan of being there six months, right? I was going to be there, recruit our vice presidents, our associates and analysts, move back to the US and do my head in the clouds thing. And what I realized is the level of talent I wanted didn't exist, right? And what ended up happening is we spent the better part of that last four and a half years developing our talent, right? And developing a culture of talent. You know, again, going back to some of the mistakes that entrepreneurs make, they want to hold on to every aspect of it. What we realized very early on with our finance background is to institutionalize this business, we need to bring in the right people and empower them, right? Uh, I mean, the word entrepreneur is something that gets used quite often in our firm because we believe every single person in our firm is an entrepreneur, right? If someone is able to do something to improve the firm, then they should do it, right? And they're encouraged to do it, and we're not going to be roadblocks to that, right? And this goes down to the most junior analysts, right? Having ideas about, you know, the way we should run our HR or, you know, internal activities or business development, right? Because we have 60 people now, right? And there's only two of us and there's 58 other people who we like to think are much smarter than us who can contribute to that, right? And, you know, a lot of this goes back to our own experience. We had the opportunity where, you know, we used to be tech bankers when that bubble burst, right? And what happened was there were very few people and we were thrust into a situation where we had to take on a lot at a very young age. I started working on Wall Street when I was 19. And I made the most of that opportunity. Sat on my first board of directors when I was 22 and made the most of that opportunity. And we realized what smart people need is opportunities. So if you're going to create a company, create an incubator for opportunities, right? Bring people in and show them that they can excel here, right? They can be entrepreneurs within the company. They can take ownership of whatever we, is we ask them to do. All right? Excellent. And so as far as the capital, you said, right? Like I was saying earlier, you know, the checkbox of, you know, what are the challenges, right? Capital is probably one of those things that could be a challenge for a lot of people, right? Because I, I don't think you need this world's strongest idea because you can modify that, but you at least need the capital to get, you give yourself the time to do that, right? So 
Sudip and I have had the fortune, finance is a nice industry in that way. So, um, you know, we were able to finance the business ourselves for a long stretch. And then along the way, again, you know, a lot of people who are in the finance community who have relations with us have been angel investors along the way. So one, it, was, it was a combination of um, uh, sufficiently deep pockets, but also a network of, of, of people also in your industry that were able to help you. Yeah. And so we've, you know, again, choosing investors, is, you know, money is a commodity. So when you do take investment, you want to make sure it's strategic, right? Even, you know, you have the opportunity of family, friends, but if there are certain friends that make more strategic sense to the business, that can be promoters of the business, that can help you network and sell your product, right? You should seek that type of capital. And even when taking institutional investment, right? As the same way an investment firm would do due diligence on the company, then the entrepreneur should do due diligence on the investor. How will you help me, beside just the money, improve my business? Help me run my operation. Again, this goes back to the idea of mentorship. Right? Your investors can be powerful mentors to the business. If I can sort of, you know, we're, we're coming to the end of the interview, and thanks very much for your, for your time and joining us. If I could wrap up by asking a question about your strategy, and I'll, I'll ask you deep about this. You yeah. work in, uh, your, your operation is in Mumbai, but it seems to me that the most of your clients are based in, in this particular region in the Arabian Gulf. Was that the strategy right. from day one? Our strategy as far as next year, we want to open an office in the Middle East. But it's not going to be just a sales office, someone going around handing people a brochure, because we've seen companies do that. And it's not very effective. We're very cognizant of the fact that you know, we've spent a lot of time building what we have. And now what we're going to use this office for is to do more high-end work, basically evolve the business. You know, clients ask for things. Can you do primary diligence? Can you you know, there's things that we've been asked to do that we don't have the capability of doing because we're not on the ground over here. And that's what this office is going to do eventually. We're going to have more of a presence here and basically create jobs here, but also use that to stay ahead of the curve as far as what we do. And in terms of uh, the celebration of entre entrepreneurship, are you here to take part in the festivities, here to network, here to find new clients? Well, or, we're definitely or... here to take part of festivities. I think everyone is. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we have, uh, as you mentioned, you know, we've helped create some of the content on WAMDA, so we're one of the knowledge partners, we're part of the team, so definitely wanted to be here for the launch. Uh, definitely meet, uh, you know, some private equity players, as many SMEs in prop as possible, and, yeah, just have a good time, basically. But it's, it's been fantastic so far. It's only day one, so. Yeah, definitely, you know, it was interesting, a speaker this morning, you know, asked how many here are entrepreneurs, you know, so I raised my hand and they asked how many of you are, you know, mentors or investors and again I raised my hand, right? And what I realized is, you know, um, you know, if you've had the fortune of being an entrepreneur, right, it's a great experience to be able to help other entrepreneurs succeed as well, right? And like I said, you're never too large to seek mentorship, right? And when you can, it's a great experience to share it as well. Great. Thank you very much. For